Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, let's start by taking a look at the price of Bitcoin. We are still waiting on confirmation that Bitcoin is heading upwards in the micro in the short term. From a macro standpoint, we are in a uptrend. We are in a bull market. We are anticipating higher highs. But in the short term, we're waiting for Bitcoin to validate that this is a reversal move to continue to higher highs. And if it is, I'm expecting a price point between 85 to 90,000 as the next target. So we'll have to be patient and let things play out. But right now, Bitcoin, as of the time of recording, is at 70,549. If we look at the DXY in the daily chart, it has some green candles, but they look very weak. So I'm hoping the DXY, the dollar currency index, keeps breaking downwards, and that will be incredibly bullish for risk assets like Bitcoin and crypto. So that's what we're waiting to see, folks. We need confirmation and let this play out. As I said in yesterday's podcast, my hope is that we enter April with very bullish momentum as we head to the halving and Bitcoin heads the 85 to 90K between that range, uh, may, maybe higher before it does another pullback. So exciting times ahead. We just got to be patient. Now, let's look at the top trending coins on social media. This data is brought to you by Santiment, which is a great partner of the channel. You can get a lot of crypto metrics on Santiment. If you want to sign up for a pro account, you can and get a discount with my referral link in the description, as well as the code Thinking Crypto. The first trending coin here is Nexo. So Nexo is the platform where you can do crypto lending and so forth. I think they're doing a marketing campaign here, so they're trending as number one. Uh, coming at number two is Internet Protocol, ICP, with good positive sentiment. Uh, number three is Anchor on Ethereum, also with strong positive sentiment. Uh, you got Civic coming in at number four, which is CVC with strong positive sentiment as well. Cody comes in at number five with decent positive sentiment. Velo comes in at number six with positive sentiment as well. Litecoin comes in here at number seven uh, with decent positive sentiment. Its negative sentiment is pretty high at 36%, but a positive is at 44, but it's trending due to the KuCoin case, which I'll share the news with you guys a little bit later. Uh, number eight is PAC Protocol, P-A-C, coming in with positive sentiment. Then Tether USDT on Avalanche with a very high positive sentiment. And finally, number 10, Stellar Lumens XLM coming in with positive sentiment as well. So those are your top trending tokens on social media. Once again, this is brought to you by Santiment. All right, folks, let's jump into the news. And first up is the KuCoin news, which I'm sure many of you heard. Prominent global cryptocurrency exchange KuCoin and two of its founders criminally charged with Bank Secrecy Act and unlicensed money transmission offenses. So guys, what's the TLDR here? What, what happened here? This is the continued cleanup of the legacy crypto exchanges. We saw Binance got hit with similar charges, right? And this is because back in the day, in the wild west of the crypto days, in the early days, these exchanges were not doing KYC AML. So KYC is know your customer, AML is anti-money laundering. You could go sign up for the exchanges, you didn't have to show your ID and verify, and you can trade, right? I remember using the platforms like that. It was how things were set up. Now, as the market matured and things progressed, we saw many of these exchanges started integrating KYC and AML. However, the regulators, they will go after you for the years that you weren't doing it. We saw that with Binance and Binance had to pay billions. So here, uh, you know, KuCoin and two of its founders getting charged and so on and so forth. So is this bearish for the market? Absolutely not. It's actually bullish. It is once again, the cleanup because we're on the rocket ship getting ready to go to higher prices. And we saw if Binance, that news didn't affect this market, right? Uh, even in a bull market, it didn't affect the market at all. It was actually positive because it's the removal of risk to uh, anything that could be detrimental to the price. So this is good. Clean up, getting the exchanges in order. They're not shutting them down. They can still operate. Just pay your fine. You, you did some sort of crime. You're going to pay the time, right? but the market keeps moving forward. So we are eliminating risk and many of these exchanges are coming in line with the regulations. And once again, uh, it's preparing us for the next move and for this asset class to keep growing. And we're seeing Wall Street, uh, banks, stock exchanges, and much more are getting in. So that's the TLDR here, guys. I don't even need to read through the details. 
It's just a cleanup. They're going after any platform that didn't use KYC AML. So uh, really, it's good news. Now, something very interesting came out of the complaint from the CFTC about what KuCoin was doing. And Jake Traversky highlighted it here. He said, hidden gem in the CFTC's KuCoin complaint. Usually, the SEC and CFTC pretend they aren't in a turf war over crypto. Today, the CFTC is openly attacking the SEC's supposed investigation of Ethereum. This may seem minor, but is actually pretty savage interagency drama by DC standards. So they highlighted specific, the CFTC highlighted specifically commodities, Ethereum, and Litecoin. <laughs> um, folks, it's what we've been talking about on the podcast and why uh, we could see a lot of problems here with these Ethereum ETF. And I've been referencing that the chair of the CFTC, Rostin Benham, went before Congress and said he doesn't know what the SEC is doing. Why is Prometheum custodying Ethereum as a security? Both agencies helped to approve the futures ETF, right? Ethereum was given uh, a non-security clearance by Bill Hinman uh, in a previous uh, administration of the SEC. So what's happening here, folks? And we're seeing some butting of heads. This is This might force Congress to act. Now, Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business added to what Jake said, uh, the timing is more significant here given what is going on at the SEC, but worth noting, the CFTC also called ETH and Litecoin commodities in its lawsuit against Binance last year. So the SEC is looking pretty dumb here because given all the history and all these things that have been taking place, but we know the game here, folks, they want to roadblock the Ethereum ETF. Gary's trying to classify Ethereum as a security. He's taking his orders from Elizabeth Warren, who is, of course, controlled by the banking incumbents who are getting disrupted. We saw two senators send a letter to the SEC saying no more ETFs, right? And I told you guys, they didn't just wake up and, and dream that up all of a sudden. That That's a plant. That That's a strategy. And most likely, Elizabeth Warren is behind it because these two, two senators were um, Democrats. So we got a battle here, folks. And uh, is this going to get messy? Now, Eleanor Terrett is also reporting that she's hearing rumblings on the institutional level about possible interest in a Litecoin ETF. Litecoin ETF? Go figure, guys. <laughs> I mean, Litecoin right now on the market cap is at number 22 there hasn't been any major developments. They're not doing much, right? This project almost seems dead. I'm not saying it's dead, but it almost seems that way from an optics standpoint. Charlie Lee is nowhere to be found. He's the founder, right? They forked Bitcoin's code and created a little bit faster of a proof of work token here. So I don't know, but it may be the reason why it's popping up is because Litecoin is proof of work and they're figuring maybe they can get that through because Bitcoin is proof of work and that, you know, pretty much Litecoin's a copy of it. Um, so we'll see, but I don't think there's going to be much demand <laughs> for Litecoin, right? Not a lot of people are interested in it. Um, don't get me wrong, my Litecoin uh, holders and community, I'm not hating, but let's be honest, right? You, you got tokens like Solana, Cardano, and even meme coins are getting all of the mentions and the, the spotlight versus Litecoin. So this is interesting. So Eleanor says here, the logic is that because of Litecoin's functional similarities to Bitcoin, the SEC may be more inclined to approve it, possibly even more so than ETH. Last week, Coinbase derivatives announced plans to launch CFTC-approved futures for Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash on April 1st, next Monday. I wonder if that's an April Fool's joke, <laughs> right? On April 1st. But look, I think this, like Eleanor is reporting here, it could be they're just trying to get as many coins through, even if they, there's not much demand. But I think Ethereum is what the market wants as number two, right? And from the institutions, BlackRock, Larry Fink, and all these guys, they want the Ethereum spot ETF. But um, maybe this is a way to force the SEC's hand. It's just a chess move. It's not so much that they're going to make a ton of money off of the Litecoin ETF. It's a chess move to force the SEC's hand and to uh, hand Gary Gensler another loss. And if he wants to go to court, he's easily going to lose that because Litecoin, 
very similar to Bitcoin. So uh, things are getting very interesting here, folks. Now let's move ahead. Um, regarding the Ethereum is a security or not a security situation and the CFTC and the SEC battling, right? Um, the House Financial Services, members of Congress are waking up to this. And I think this Ethereum situation, if Gary continues it, it may force the hand of Congress to get regulations through. So the financial services GOP folks tweeted out the following, Republicans on the House Financial Services Committee and House Agriculture GOP sent a letter to SEC Chair Gary Genser urging his agency to clarify its position with respect to the special broker-dealer license, uh, Prometheum's custody of Ethereum. So they put out an infographic here. Republicans are holding SEC chair against her accountable. But this is all just talk, man. They got to send a subpoena. Patrick McHenry, if you're listening, subpoena this man and start cutting his budget as it relates to crypto items. Don't get me wrong. The SEC has to protect investors. There are scams out there. But he's clearly not going after scams. He's going after the good actors. And there's a clear agenda to kill as many of these crypto startups as possible. Now, Congressman Tom Emmer, who I've had on the podcast multiple times, uh, retweeted this news and said the SEC and the CFTC have an extensive record asserting that Ethereum is not a security. So why this Prometheum, an SEC registered broker dealer, plan to custody ETH? And he said, I led the letter with the financial House Financial Services Committee and my colleagues to Gary Gensler to get some answers. Let's see what they come up with. But I think they got to take the gloves off, just like the crypto industry is taking the gloves off and suing the hell out of scumbag regulator Gary Genser and the SEC. Now, a quick word from our sponsor, folks. That is VeChain, one of the top layer one enterprise level blockchains out there that is getting massive adoption. They are building incredible Web3 technology and decentralized apps. Some of the brands working with uh, VeChain include PwC, BMW, Walmart, China, as well as the Boston Consulting Group. They are building a lot of real world use cases and applications. Uh, VeChain has low energy consumption. It is very fast and scalable. I'm a VET token holder. I have been for years. I'm very bullish on this project. That's why I selected them as a sponsor. So if you'd like to learn more about VeChain, visit vchain.org. Link will be in the description. All right, folks, we got some Bitcoin spot ETF news. So Hashdex apparently now got its Bitcoin ETF live. <laughs> um, it took a while and they, they put out a press release here saying title and Hashdex announced trading of U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF. Eric Balchunas of Bloomberg said uh, the, the ticker symbol is DeFi. Uh, he says they finally and officially make it to the starting gate, spot Bitcoin ETF number 11. The getting is so good right now, I could see this one getting some bites if the fee is competitive, despite being so late. So folks, no one wants to miss the train here. Game theory playing out and the demand for Bitcoin and crypto assets will continue to grow. We are still in the early innings as RIAs and wealth managers get educated about these uh, ETFs, the fees, who's the custodian and so forth. I recently had uh, Rick Edelman, the RIA guru and uh, you know the Wall Street legend, and we talked about this and he walked through the process of how RIAs will be looking at Bitcoin ETFs and offering it to their clients. And he expects billions to flow through from RIAs to the ETFs. Now let's move ahead. Uh, Solana welcomes Circle Cross Chain Protocol. So Solana developers can natively swap USDC tokens with Ethereum and other ecosystems. So we're seeing interoperability being built for different blockchains. It's pretty incredible, guys. Um, look, I'm not the biggest Solana fan. I do have some Sol tokens, but Solana has had a lot of downtime and I hope they fix it, right? I, I'm not wishing them bad or anything like that. But when I see you have th these many downtimes over the years, it's not a good sign, but um, they are very fast. And uh, they continue to get a lot of development activity and folks building on them. So I have to keep it uh, honest, right, and fair. So uh, Solana has been ripping. They're getting a lot of liquidity, a lot of uh, people building meme coins and much more on them. So Circle, the issuer of popular stablecoin USDC, has partnered with Solana to bring its cross-chain transfer protocol, CCTP, to its blockchain system. CCTP is designed by Circle to enable the secure transfer of of USDC between different blockchain ecosystems using the native mint and burn process. 
This means that Solana developers can, can now natively swap USDC tokens from Ethereum and other EVM compatible ecosystems, including Arbitrum, Avalanche, Base, Optimism, and Polygon. It will also be compatible with non-EVM blockchains. CCTP first integrated with a non-EVM chain in October last year when it partnered with Noble, a, a Cosmos-based token protocol to bring USDC natively into the Cosmos ecosystem. As Noble itself is integrated with Cosmos Interblock blockchain communication protocol, uh, CCTP is also functionally compatible with all Cosmos chains that are connected with IBC. So folks, uh, this is great to see. I am very bullish on Circle and USDC and what they're doing. Uh, Circle issues, of course, the second largest stablecoin that is USDC, Tether being the uh, number one with USDT. But, you know, the competition's heating up between these stablecoin issuers and you got PayPal has their own uh, stablecoin. And could USDC be used by the government as the digital dollar? I think it's possible. That's certainly, certainly a, a possible scenario, but we'll have to wait and see what the government decides to do. Now, speaking of stablecoins, we got news here that Tether looks to build the next generation of open AI models with new data division. The AI job postings come after a $600 million AI infrastructure investment Tether made in the fall. Now, many of you may have seen my recent interview with the CEO of Tether, and that is Paulo Ardoino. If you haven't seen that, it was published eight days ago. Be sure to check it out. We touch on AI. We touch on everything related to stable coins. Can USDT uh, depeg? What's the future of it look like? And is AI a threat and much more? So uh, he, he talked about Tether going beyond stable coins and looking at other business models. So we're starting to see some of these things come to fruition here. So the new division named Tether Data is looking to hire an AI engineer and a head of AI research and development according to Tether's job recruiting website. Here's a quote, our goal is to build a next generation of open AI models, leading innovation in AI through an accessible, transparent, and privacy-preserving approach to job postings read. So very interesting. Tether's uh, got a lot on their plate. They're making a lot of money. They're the world's largest stablecoin issuer. So we'll see what else they do next. Uh, it's pretty fascinating to watch this play out. And in my interview with Paolo, we talked about Cantor Fitzgerald CEO Howard Lutnick at Davos 2024 giving a massive endorsement of Tether, saying they have the money, they are fully reserved. And if you go to Tether's website, they have audits and they have been doing quarterly attestations. So uh, Tether, I think, is has righted the ship after maybe in the early days, the wild west of the crypto days, things were not in order, but I think things are in order now. So Pretty incredible what's happening. Well, folks, that's the news. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Folks, don't forget, I'll be at DC Blockchain Summit uh, 2024. This is happening in May, May 15th and May 16th. If you want to attend, uh, you can check out the links in the description to go get tickets. You can get a discount using my code Thinking Crypto. And I would love to see you guys there, either on the summit day or the blockchain education day. You don't have to attend both. You can attend one. Uh, the blockchain education day is very fascinating because we're going to go to Capitol Hill and speak to different folks there. So uh, doing some grassroots uh, movements here to get crypto legislation, guys. And uh, like I said, I'll be there. Uh, I'll be vlogging, I'll be podcasting and much more. So I would love to meet you guys there and, and chat about crypto and much more. So uh, once again, check out the link in the description and you can get a discount code. Also, folks, a great way to support the podcast is to please sign up for my free email newsletter on Substack, link in the description. Also follow me on X, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you're at. It doesn't cost you anything to just follow and subscribe. So thank you for your support and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.